All right. Hi, everyone. Um, are folks able to see the slides that I've shared on my screen? Yeah. All right. Great. Well, my name's Laura Katawaki, and I work for United Way British Columbia. And I'm very excited today to be able to help um, moderate this webinar focused on Elders Want Climate Action Now. And before we begin the webinar, I want to do a land acknowledgement. So United Way acknowledges the homelands of the indigenous peoples of this place we now call Canada and honors the many, many territorial keepers of the lands on which we work. And I um, specifically want to acknowledge the fact that today I'm calling in from the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Coquitlam First Nation. And would like to thank the Coquitlam who continue to live on these lands and care for them along with the waters and all that's above and below. And the topic that we have today is climate change. And this is a topic that is important for many Indigenous communities. And so I just want to take a moment to highlight some of the work that's being done by First Nations in BC around this topic. And um, one initiative that has recently been um, worked on at the provincial level is the development of the BC First Nations Climate Strategy and Action Plan. And this was released in April, 2022. And it includes 20 urgent actions for addressing climate change. And this has all been developed by of course, First Nations communities and with the First Nations climate change lens. So I'll share the um, link to that uh, resource in a moment. And so just wanted to share that for those of you who might be interested in learning more about First Nations perspectives on climate change. Before we um, begin the webinar presentation, just a few housekeeping items. So during the webinar, the guests will remain um, muted. Um, feel free, though, to introduce yourself in the chat if you'd like. For example, you could share your name, your pronouns, organization, or territories that you're calling from, uh, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Uh, you can also turn on a closed captioning feature if that would be useful for you. There is a button at the bottom of your screen that should say CC, and this can be used for closed captions. Now, these are automatic captions, so they might not be 100% um, accurate, but if you would like to use that feature, please feel free to turn that on. Um, there's going to be a question period at the end of the presentation. However, if you do have a burning question that you think needs to be um, answered immediately, please feel free to put it in the chat or in the Q&A box, and then I can bring up that question to our presenter. And um, just so folks know, the webinar is being recorded and we will be sharing the slides and the recording with everyone who attended afterwards. And of course, feel free to share it with your networks as well. All right, so now moving on to introducing our presenter. And I'm really excited today about the topic that we're um, going to be discussing, which is climate change. And this is a topic that I think to date um, the Healthy Aging Team and Healthy Aging Core hasn't explored too much, so it's really exciting to have a new area of learning. And I think for the CBSS sector, um, especially in recent years, seeing the impacts of extreme weather events like fires and flooding, we've all been seeing the impacts of climate change and also the urgency to act. So I'm really excited to learn more about this topic. Now, our presenter today is Dr. Carol Christopher, and she is a SPET guiding elder, director, and executive team member. She has a doctorate in nutrition and has developed and taught university and adult education courses for 45 years, promoting local, sustainable, and just food. She's been a director of the Society Promoting Environmental Conservation, or SPEC, since 1996, when she chaired the Sustainable Food Team and co-founded the School Garden Programs. Carol was president of the board for five years, and during that time, she undertook a reconciliation and decolonization initiative 
and in response to becoming an elder herself, started the SPEC Elders Circle, which encourages Western elders to reclaim an active elder role on behalf of a just and secure future for upcoming generations. In 2019, she stepped down as board president and was designated a SPEC guiding elder, and she's the current lead of the SPEC Elders Circle. Carol has also served on many community boards and advisory councils, including being past chair of the Vancouver Food Policy Council, advising City Council on food security. And she's a master gardener, an enthusiastic camper, and a creative cook with her partner, Rick. She speaks and offers workshops on topics related to food security and also becoming an elder. And she's an avid jazz vocalist, a dedicated meditation practitioner, and in 2018, she was acknowledged by the city of Vancouver for her 35 years of volunteer work. So Carol has a very impressive resume and I think really has a lot of useful wisdom to share with us today, which I am so looking forward to. So without further ado, I will hand over the presentation to Carol. Carol, thank you so much. Laura, thank you so much. I appreciate the introduction. It's interesting to hear it all, uh, you know, sort of said in one piece. I, I relate to most of it still. Um, so what I think I would like to do is, first of all, mention that I'm on the unceded traditional and uh, ancestral lands of the Musqueam people. Uh, typically, I think we honor and acknowledge the Musqueam, the Tsleil-Waututh, and the Squamish. Where I'm specifically located, I think, is uncontested uh, Musqueam land, and I'm I'm very privileged, I think, to be uh, residing on this land. So, I want to make that acknowledgement too. Um, it's been uh, twenty some years that I've been on the board of SPEC, and over that time, done quite a few things. But my passion really is in elders. But let me, if you have already given me uh, the ability to share my screen, I'll share my screen and I will be using a, a PowerPoint presentation for not too many slides, about 15 of them. And the majority of them will happen in an earlier part of this session when I'm talking a little bit about spec and what SPEC does and what the Elder Circle is doing and a little more detail on this, on the, some of the programming that we're doing there. But then I'm going to turn my attention to a really big project that elders across Canada are engaged in to really speak up and speak out about the climate, as, as Laura has already said. And then when I'm finished with that, I'm going to stop screen sharing and just offer an opportunity for you to ask me any questions. Now, once I start screen sharing, Laura, you're more than welcome to introduce and uh, to interrupt me and ask a question. I'm not sure when I'm screen sharing that I will be able to see the chat. So if you don't hear or in any way sense my responding, just speak up. And um, uh, that way I'll know that there's a question and stop and let you ask the question of me. So yeah, happy when, to do so. Okay, that's great, I'm glad. So I will screen share now. And what I'm going to be bringing up is a PowerPoint presentation. Can you see that, okay? Uh, yes, we can see it now. Okay, great. So this is, uh, I have developed this with this group of people in mind. Um, I'm using the title Elders Loving the Earth because one of the key programs of, El of a SPEC is a program called Loving the Earth and I like that so much that I use it quite a bit in my talks because we're learning that from communication information about climate that people don't respond um, People have difficulty, let me say, responding to messages that are overly, uh, that are the, the kinds of messages that, that people get kind of scared when we talk about what's happening with the climate. 
um, in fact, what people really respond to is love. Knowing that we have a bond, a connection with the land, with the various features of the natural world. And when we realize that they're jeopardized, it's out of a sense of, of, of love and caring that often activates our action, not so much out of the kinds of doom and gloom messages that have been more the way that people have tried to uh, engage the public. So I like to em emphasize loving the earth. I come from SPEC. Uh, SPEC is an old organization, 55 years old this year. We think it might be the oldest uh, environmental organization that is environmental, non-governmental organization, because there are uh, nature organizations like the Sierra Club that have been around longer. But it's, this is an old and venerable organization. It is indeed an elder organization in its own right. And I've been a part of it for the last 20 some years and recently started, well, recently, uh, nearly a decade, started the Spec Elder Circle. I'm going to say a little bit more about the Elder Circle, but let me just come at first and talk a little bit more about Spec. I'm not going to read all of these uh, different programs that SPEC is involved with, but more let just give you a visual picture of the teams that we have. There are four of them, the food team and the energy and transportation team. And then as well, we have zero waste, which is another team and the climate resilience team. And then I will come to talk a little bit more about um, the SPEC Elder Circle. So I'm just showing you this as an example of, of the teams that SPEC has and the many programs that are encompassed under that. Now, I start this by apologizing for the fact that the print is so light. I realized too late that I meant to get all of this particular uh, slide to get the, the, the image that this is using back to the person who made the slide for me and say, we really need to get the print in darker form, but I didn't get it done. So I'm going to talk you through this slide. And I'm going to start, and I think you can probably see this if I bring my cursor over. I'm going to start with leading elders learning circles. Because this is a way that the SPEC Elder Circle invites people from the public to come in about once every two months. Sometimes we have a theme and sometimes it's just an open discussion, but it's an opportunity for people to learn about the SPEC Elder Circle. And from there, they may get involved with our programs. So I'll talk a little bit about the programs. One of them, a very important one that we're working on right now is the overall networking and outreach to other elders organizations. SPEC as an elder, SPEC elder circle that is, as a, 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 an organization, is making connections with other elder organizations in the, prov in the city, in the region, in the province, and now uh, recently across the country. And I will be talking a little bit more about that because that is the movement and the the place in our work where we're relating to other elder organizations to encourage uh, that elders speak up about the climate. We also have an ongoing program called Building Youth Alliances. Um, and what I will say is that that program is now started to be blended with another program called Working with Indigenous Elders. And so for the last three years, I've been, as a part of the coursework that I do with the Elder Circle, I've been inviting Indigenous elders to come in at some point in that course and talk about their experience as elders. And that has uh, developed a, a, a small group of Indigenous elders that we're now working with, and particularly with one Indigenous elder, um, to speak out as Western and Indigenous elders together about the climate. And that has more recently matured into a decision that we're going to actually 
build a intergenerational and uh, uh, land-based curriculum to help to connect youth to the land. I'm sure that some of you, or perhaps all of you, are aware that, that particularly in Western society, we have lost our sense of connection and bondedness with the land. And so that is what I think allows us to take the kinds of actions that we have that have created human-caused climate change and our inability, apparently, to really respond quickly and appropriately to the kinds of measures that we need to take to slow this climate change down and reverse it and restore a, a healthy climate for the future. So that work that we're doing is a work that I, is very close to my heart and um, one that we'll be building over the next few years. There's over here with this picture of the head with the flowers in it is meant to give just a little bit of an idea of maturing as elders, because a part of maturing is really building a, an awareness within ourselves that we have responsibility to cultivate certain characteristics. And as people cultivate those characteristics and mature as elders, there are ways that we have of celebrating them. And I'll just speak briefly about one of them. We're right now preparing a series of profiles of elders that we call elders in our midst. And these are people in the community who may have been doing excellent, extraordinary work for years or decades, but they're not acknowledged or well known by the public. They're not public figures particularly. And so we're trying to find those people and we're using young people to do the interviewing. This is another building relationships with younger people to interview them, prepare a profile, get it published, have it shown perhaps in a gallery. That's what we're working on. So that's a picture. I, I should just quickly say down here at the bottom, it says publishing elders courses and books. We are doing that and it's an ongoing project. So that gives you, I hope, a little bit of a picture of what the Elder Circle is about and the work that we do. To summarize it all, I would say, in looking at the, 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 the center of this um, uh, picture, the Elder Circle is really about encouraging elders and helping to them to build a sense of agency and then to turn that agency into action, to do work in the world that is bigger than just their own self-interest. And because this is a group that's interested in healthy aging, I want to say that one of the things that is increasingly clear from gerontologists and others who do this kind of research is that when older people get involved with things that are bigger than themselves, and start to feel a sense of purpose and uh, meaning, deeper meaning in their lives, it actually does have an impact on their physical health and on their mental health, their mental well being. So, this kind of work, I have a, a, a deep commitment to it myself. I believe it's very rewarding and engaging. And I believe that it is entirely appropriate to recommend to, el to older persons that they think about being an elder and equipping themselves as elders, not only because they're needed, but because this is something that brings good value to them in their lives. Okay, so, well, I probably will have answered some of these questions already, but why an elder circle in an environmental organization? Basically, the way that I see and the SPEC elder circle sees Western elders as they're seen by the public as needing services, but they're not seen as contributors. And we believe that they are both. They are both in need of services and they have important contributions to make. We're facing a epic polycrisis, the climate change, the loss of biodiversity, 
social polarization, and more. And actually, wisdom as a quality that's in this mix is currently in short supply. But elders have age-related capacities, and wisdom is one of those capacities that we can open ourselves up to developing and, and, and maturing our sense of wisdom. It's time, I believe, for an evolutionary step in human consciousness where we actually start to live more in tune with who we are and what we are on this planet in a way that helps us to thrive, helps the whole planetary system to thrive, all of the other beings that we coexist with. And this is something that takes wisdom, takes caring, and elders can lead the way. They may not be the only ones, but they're an important part. So, what is an elder? Now, I'm not expecting you to answer all these questions, and certainly not in the immediate, but I'm going to read them off to you and then maybe say a few words about them. What does the word elder mean to you? What does it mean to you? Is a senior different than an elder? Do you aspire to be an elder? Are you an elder? And as you think about that, I will say a few words about what I think it means to be an elder. And I've said some things already, but I believe there are qualities and characteristics that can be developed that help us to take on a role as someone who has leadership and mentoring ability in the community, in the society, perhaps even at a global level. And there are elders certainly that are working at all of these levels. And um, the mentoring and the leadership is very important. What's I think absolutely key is the caring about future generations, about seeing ourselves, well, and caring about present generations, seeing ourselves as kind of in a, standing in a line of people that go from the past, that we're now a part of the present and we look to the future and we have a sense of being in that circle, in that uh, uh, role, of having a role to play. So when I think is a senior different than an elder, one of the things I think is that not all seniors want to be elders and not all seniors are equipped as elders. Not that they couldn't be and not that there's anything wrong with being a senior, but there is a dis different role for an elder than to be a senior, although for sure, every elder is, no, that's not, I would say every elder is a senior, but that's not true. There are elders who are young people. So not all elders are seniors and not all seniors are elders. Perhaps that's a way to put it. The question, do you aspire to be an elder? Perhaps you are an elder. I can't see anybody on this seminar or this webinar, so I'm not sure about your age, but I understand there are elders and there are younger people that are a part of this group. And you may be an older person who says, you know, I do see that as something I would like in my life. Or you may be a younger person and say, yes, as I get older, or perhaps even now already, I see myself as maturing into becoming an elder. No one can answer that question for you. And certainly no one can answer the question for you, are you an elder? But we can all help each other learn what it means to be an elder and help to evoke and evolve in each other the role of being an elder. I've spoken about the qualities or characteristics of an elder. And here is where they are. And I'd like to just quickly say as it says down at the bottom of the slide, these are drawn from academic sources, particularly from psychology and sociology, 
from medical sources, particularly neuroscience, with their amazing capacity to actually gain some insight into when certain emotional qualities are present, where what that triggers, what that actually illuminates in the brain. And so there's, there's stuff that's been learned about these characteristics from neuroscience. And of course, we have a lot of historical sources. We have coming down to us through the ages, a sense of when someone is called wise, an idea of what that means. But more recently, we've begun to actually identify characteristics. And what is really reassuring to me is that in all of these different sources, the, there's a lot of overlap and coherence. So wherever we look, this seems to be a list that holds up. Occasionally, there's something that goes on the list that wasn't there before. But I've been working with this list now for nearly 10 years and reading different things. And it's surprising how congruent and how, um, uh, how well overlapping the lists are. So let me just briefly say something about each one of these, but I will be brief. Empathy and compassion. That means not only for other people, but for ourselves, the ability to feel within yourself, especially if there's something going on that's difficult or, or even suffering, and to be able to have compassion for yourself. But it also means to be able to imagine into the experience of another person and to imagine what they might be experience, experiencing and to hold them in a compassionate regard as well. Emotional self-regulation. So there are many ways that our emotions are triggered and sometimes they are triggered in ways where we are, we're flooded with um, cortisol and uh, uh, and hormones that completely put us over the edge as far as our emotional uh, well-being at the moment. And so learning how to soothe ourselves, how to know when we're feeling what we're feeling, and how to respond to that in a way where we help ourselves come back to a state of equilibrium or emotional self-regulation. Another one is overcoming the human negativity bias. And I, my husband saw this and he said, why did you underline the ING? And I said, I think it's because it's a really hard one to just overcome once and for all. We have a negativity bias because we tend to see the world in terms of what could happen that could harm me what might be around that would be dangerous. And we pay more attention to that than we do to what's around that actually is a, a very positive thing. And so it takes a little effort on our part to, to reorient our negativity bias to a more positive view. But doing so really helps our own sense of well-being in the world. Another one, another characteristic is being self-reflective. That really means understanding your own mind and understanding what it is you're thinking, how you're responding to that, um, what that's doing to your overall sense of well-being. And so that gives you a lot more choice in the world. Embracing uncertainty is another characteristic. We live in a world that is uncertain. And yet we kind of pretend that we have some control over that world instead of embracing uncertainty and acknowledging that, gee, we'd like things to be more stable and more certain than they are. But in fact, we have to deal with uncertainty a lot in our lives. And the ability to do that really opens up space in our minds. I'm gonna quickly go through the rest of them. Elders are generous. Um, we use all of our resources on behalf of what we know is going to be leaving a, a, a much better situation for younger people coming along behind us or newer of, or, or future generations. 
Elders can also be decisive. Even when they know that the circumstances are a bit ambivalent and you could go one way or the other, having the ability to make a decision and do the best you can with the information you have is a quality that's uh, an enviable quality and elders have it. Being pro-social, being inclusive, and being spiritual in the sense that you're, you're connected to something bigger than yourself. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that you belong to any particular spiritual tradition, though you might, and, and, and most, perhaps all of them, are a tremendous resource to people. Now, having talked about all of those qualities, I'm going to also say that I think one of the the quotes that really kind of brings it all down into three uh, factors that the Dalai Lama says uh, seem to have the greatest influence on increasing our happiness. One is the ability to reframe our situation more positively. Second is our ability to experience gratitude. And finally, our choice to be kind and generous. And if you think about it, I think you would agree without my going back and, and, and making all of these points very clearly, that that encompasses a lot of the characteristics that we just talked about. I also want to just quickly, I'm going to be turning now to look at that part of the talk that has to do with the elders that are involved with climate work. But in turning in that direction, I want to say that there is what's called a great unraveling that is undeniably happening and life will never be the same. But we're also involved in the great turning that is alive and well. This is a quote by a great uh, elder, Joanna Macy. So I think it's important for us to remember, yes, a lot of things are happening in the world that are very challenging, but there's also a lot that's happening that's very encouraging. And we need to keep our eye on that. That, that harkens back to the statement by the Dalai Lama that learning to reframe things in a more positive view is a part of the way that we stay intellectually, emotionally, psychologically healthy. There are ways that elders or seniors as a group have influence that we often don't take notice of or account of. And so I want to just say something about them. One is we vote. In fact, Bill McGibbon, who's a very big climate organizer in the United States, he likes to say that there's hardly anything you can do to keep an elder from voting. And that's true. Statistically, elders vote more than any other segment of the population. We are wealthy. Now, I have to put a caveat in there because, of course, that wealth is not very well distributed. But as a collective group, a segment of society, older people, elders, seniors, are the wealthiest segment in society. And as a group, as a collective, we care. We care about young people. We, as there was, I forget the physician's name who wrote a, <laughs> who wrote a book that I'm also forgetting the name to at the moment, but I remember very clearly reading in that book, he says, as we, as older people, we approach that far horizon of life and we begin to realize as we look at that far horizon that in fact our priorities change. We no longer have the priorities that we had when we were 20 or 40 or even 60. But now we start to reprioritize and that reprioritizing brings up a kind of natural grandparenting relationship that elders, seniors have with younger members of their family and younger people in society in general. I certainly have noticed that, and perhaps you've noticed it as well. Now I want to talk very specifically about how we use that influence, and that is we use that influence for the betterment of younger generations and future generations. And something that is happening right now is called Seniors for Climate, 
and one of the slogans of that movement is later is too late we want climate action now so seniors for climate is actually a group that got together in the eastern part of the country but its movement is, has spread now across the country to encourage elders to speak up and speak out about the climate and specifically on October the 1st, which you'll see coming along in later slides, it will be repeated. October the 1st is International Day of Older Persons. It's also the National Seniors Day for Canada. And so we're trying to get elders across the country to speak up about the climate in their own locations on that day. And then to mark that in some way and let us know so that we can put you on a map and that map will also go on to a national map. And then we will, at the after October 1st, present all of this to government officials as a form of advocacy. So that's the second point, advocating for government to take effective climate action. And I guess I should add the word now. There also, I see it also as building a movement that's meant to benefit for or for the well-being of future generations. The Seniors for Climate, the guiding messages are what's on this slide. We're seniors. We're acting for a better world that's free from the destruction that's caused by burning fossil fuels. Now, I learned recently that upwards to 50% of Canadians don't actually understand that the climate crisis is caused by burning fossil fuels. I was astonished, but then I have to realize that there is a, a fair amount of misinformation and b, not so much good information in good plain speaking language for people to put those things together. Climate change is caused by burning fossil fuels. So the problem is that we're facing more frequent and more severe disasters around the world because of these fossil fuel emissions. I'm going to take just a minute to say, you've, the, we dig these fossil fuels up out of the ground, we use them by igniting and burning them. They release carbon dioxide, they also release methane, if they're put together with certain agricultural chemicals, they release nitrous oxide. All of these very powerfully gases that accumulate in the atmosphere and trap heat. And some of them trap much more than others. But what we have now is accumulation of these emissions in a manner and in an amount which the earth cannot take care of by its natural systems of cleansing. And so we have to bring down the emissions and we have to slow down the rate at which we are using anything that will cause climate heating. That means conserving energy and it also means switching to renewable energies. We have those solutions. They are affordable and they are healthy solutions and they're beneficial for everyone. We just need to take the action that's necessary, the bold action that's necessary to, to do this before the situation gets worse. So time is running out, let's act now. That's the message. Let's, let's do what we can now for our grandkids and future generations. The Spec Elder Circle and the Suzuki Elders, which is a similar group of elders related to the Suzuki Foundation, together form a Seniors for Climate hub in British Columbia. And we've been working for the past several months to put together a lot of materials to send them out. The, the National Office has also prepared a lot of materials and we're sending them out and our own materials across the province and up into um, the Yukon to help any seniors that want to do something on October 1st, figure out what they might do and support them in doing it. 
We're also, as if we didn't have quite enough to do, we're also planning an adventure here in Vancouver. And I know most of you are not in Vancouver, but I thought I would just let you know about one of the ways that we are celebrating this day is to explore how the arts, film, music, dance, intergenerational climate workshops, uh, uh, climate cafe, and a variety of things that we're inviting people to come in and, and participate in and learn more about climate change and climate action. Whoops, now the final slide is what can you do? I don't really know what you are each and together in a position to do where you are, but here's some ideas and we can talk as I finish up here about some other possible things. Perhaps you can organize a climate activity for elders or seniors in your area. Perhaps you can encourage elders or seniors to organize an activity for themselves. Perhaps you could show a film in your facility or encourage elders to view a film together. We have at least one 20 minute film from the hub that we can share with you if that's something that you would like to do. There's a lot of other resources. If you put your name on our database, and I think some of you may already be there, but you will receive and share information and ideas about October 1st with those seniors that you're involved with, or if you're a senior with any group of seniors, even including small things like having a neighborhood barbecue. And I've put this um, link and I would ask maybe Laura, if you would put it in the um, in the chat so that if people wanted to, they could just copy that and paste it and you would have the link to get in touch with us. And that would automatically put your name into our database and we could send you some more information. So I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to ask Laura now if there's any questions that people have, and that might mean that you need a moment to consider your questions. Great. Thank you very much for that wonderful presentation, Thank Carol. You. Thank you. I felt that I learned a lot. And one of the things that was particularly interesting to me was the point that you raised about um, needing to kind of change our narrative and framing and think about those messages of love or more positive messages about how people love the earth and want to care about it rather than doom and gloom. So that was um, a really interesting learning for me. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't have any questions in the chat yet. So I will take the opportunity then to ask um, the first question. Great. So I'd be really interested to know you've spoken um, a bit about some different opportunities and examples of how people who are seniors themselves or perhaps working in organizations that serve or support seniors can um, take action around the Climate Action Day. And I'd be interested to know, um, thinking more, I guess, about the long term um, beyond just doing a one-time event, if you have any suggestions for um, resources or ways that um, organizations who support seniors could um, look at how they can engage with seniors around this topic, but also um, elevate the voices of seniors and provide them with the space and opportunity to be leaders around climate change and to be um, elders, as you said, in this area. So you're wondering if I have any thoughts about the long-term work to engage elders in this area and what people here now might do in their organizations and with the seniors that they work with. You know, one of the things that I think uh, I would say about that is that this is really a movement that is starting to build. It's been built pretty a significant movement in the United States around a group called Third Act. <clears throat> and that's Bill McGibbon, who I mentioned before. And um, uh, they are doing some very exciting actions. But I think the first thing that needs to happen is that people need to kind of come together and talk together. And talk together in ways that are respectful, 
uh, but also sharing feelings. You know, people respond to each other when when what what is being said to them, this goes back to your point about uh, love and not doom and gloom. What happens when we talk about what we're afraid of or what we're deeply concerned about and we do it in a heartful way, that brings up positive emotions for other people towards us, even if they don't see the topic in quite the same way. I think that service organizations, most of them that I'm aware of, have situations where they bring seniors together in some kind of constellation. And actually taking the the leap of faith that they could break the silence around climate conversations and could provide some good rules around climate conversation. And that is, we talk about our own feelings. We don't lecture other people about what they should think. We don't just focus on the doom and gloom, but we also talk about what we're afraid is going to be lost. And that may seem gloomy, but it's talking from our feelings rather than from our statistics, from our head. So those are some of the kinds of things. One of the biggest impediments to climate action is the silence in the population about it. People working in service organizations, and this is true across society, not just with seniors. The silence is has got to be broken. We have to start talking to each other and admitting this is serious. There are things that we can do about it, but we first have to talk about it with each other. We have to open those conversations up. So I don't know, does that get at some of the things, Laura, that you were imagining I might say that would be helpful? Yeah, I think that was a really great answer. And um, really interesting to highlight that the starting point is really just having conversations about. Yes, it's so important. It's so important. It seems so simple. And yet, because we're afraid that those conversations are going to go off the rails, we stay away from them. But we have to kind of like, if we go into them with an intention to talk from our hearts and not as an accusation and to hold on to those moments when we get reactive and we think we can't do anything but just tell that person how stupid they are, but actually just say, I, I, I don't see it that way and I am deeply concerned something fine you know rehearse a few little things like that that you know you could fall back on if you get really triggered you could even say you know i know it right now i'm triggered and i'm probably not going to say the right thing so i'm not going to say anything for a moment and take a breath these are all things that we're counseling people in the climate communication sector and the public is behind but believe me the climate communication sector found out how far behind they were in terms of understanding what really helps to get this message across. And it is to speak from our feelings and to speak mm -hmm. from our hearts. Mm -hmm. And we have a few questions um, in the chat. Sure. Sure. One is um, about the email address that you provided yes. earlier. So the BC Hub email. And yeah. so the person, um, Mika, wanted to know if that's an email directly to you where you would be responding or if they wanted to get in contact with you. If they um, wanted to get in contact with me, I can put my email in the chat. I'll do that right now. All right, great. I will do the best I can. If it's questions about resources, I am not really going to be able to ex to send those because that's all being held in a database and there's a person who has responsibility who can very quickly go and get and send. But if for some reason you want to talk to me personally at a, 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 and at a personal level, by all means, feel free to communicate with me. Did I, did I uh, put that in there? Yes. Okay. So I, you might have to, oh, you did. You're quick. Thank you. Okay. Right, and then we have um, somebody with their hand out. 
hand up, I believe. So I'll go to them. And then there's also a question in the chat from uh, Varouj. So I'll ask that after, but I'll let Veronica uh, go first. Veronica, do you want to ask your question? Oh. Are you able to unmute yourself, Veronica? I think she has. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Christopher, for a very uh, insightful uh, presentation. I appreciate it. I uh, wanted to ask you uh, around uh, th that incident in June 2021, when a lot of uh, older adults actually uh, were victims of the indoor overheating. Um, mm. And uh, that's a result of, of course, um, the climate change. And uh, during that time, we were caught really unaware of what could have been done to prevent those more than 600 deaths. Yes. Uh, what uh, I wonder how spec responded to that uh, unfortunate and very sad incident. And moving forward, how would uh, the elder, the spec, uh, the group that you're a member of, actually uh, mobilize the members of the community to have a meaningful climate action and um, a meaningful um, response involving not only the elders, not only the elderly, but also the seniors, not, but also the younger generations. It's actually some kind of an intergenerational mm -hmm. mobilization. Mm -hmm. So well, there's a couple of answers to that. First of all, you know, I never, ever hear about that without getting tears. It's so tragic what happened in that instance. And um, we really we really need to take the actions that are necessary that, that we don't have that happening again. Um, the city has been very responsive and uh, neighborhood houses and community centers and other uh, organizations that have the capacity to provide cooling centers and to provide organizational structure have, I think, done a credible I'm not in a position to really do a good job of evaluating how successful, and I guess we won't really know unless we have another incident like that, whether we have adequate resources in place, but that has definitely been taken on. Now, SPEC is moving much more in the arena of helping people to understand what they can do at an, at an individual level and as and in an advocacy level to uh, provide for a more sustainable future. And um, well, the title of this Love in the Earth uh, that actually started when we put together uh, a fair in one of the uh, parks in Vancouver, where we had about 2000 people came and it was really a family centered event. And it's meant to be an annual event. It was definitely interrupted by COVID, but it's a process of bringing a lot of intergenerational, uh, an intergenerational group of people together to look at some of the things that we can do as a community to support our community, that we can do as a household, that we can do as advocates to change the, the amount of um, emissions that we're personally responsible for. Now, I wanna say that there's a debate within the community as to whether individual action makes a difference. But I think we have come to believe and to, to have evidence that individual action is important Surely action at scale, which is why it's so important that the city and the city under the city auspices, a whole variety of organizations have taken on the job of providing cooling centers. Um, so I'm not sure, Veronica, if I'm, in, if I'm answering your, your question adequately, but I'm basically saying SPEC advocates for, but doesn't have the capacity 
to provide a cooling center for for people. But we what we do is to try to encourage people in their individual behavior and in their community relationships to do the kinds of things that help to reverse this situation. Does that help? Yes, Dr. Christopher, thank you so much. You're Appreciate welcome. It. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. And then there's a comment from Varuj, and I apologize if I've mispronounced your name, um, in the chat. And they say, OPIAC wants to be a part of it. So that sounds um, great. And I think you've got the email for the BC Hub or also um, Carol, if you want to follow up with her about that. And then there's also a question about how does the response climate action look like? How does a response what what does a response to climate action look like? Is that? Uh, I think so. Um, Rouge, if you want to clarify the question in the chat, feel free if we've misinterpreted it. Uh -huh. uh, should I look at the chat to look at the question myself? Is that what you're saying? Let me take a look. Um, how does a response to climate? You know, there are many, many different ways that we can respond to climate change. Um, I wish I knew a little bit more about what direction the question was going in so that I could frame my answer a little bit better. But I think I would go back to, to say that, mm -hmm. oops, maybe someone was going to do that. Maybe someone was going to say, does someone have a point to make? Hi, hi, this is this is Varuj. I don't know. I don't want to interrupt you. But, That's okay. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead, because uh, you're you're the one that wrote it, so you can help yeah. me. Yeah. Thank you for this wonderful workshop. I'm with uh, the City of Vancouver Older People uh, Elders Action Committee. Uh, oh, great. So I've, take, I I've taken on Mark White, of course, as the chair, and uh, wonderful work that uh, the, our uh, senior advocacy group is doing. So I've taken on the climate um, portfolio, and a lot of good work is being done on this. So um, I also work with Little Mouth Neighborhood House and the neighborhood houses regarding climate action. So I have a lot to um, share, but um, at, at next Wednesday, we're doing an elder, Diana Day, who is a reconciliation planner with the city of Vancouver. Uh, we're meeting at um, King Edward and... Um, Midtown Services, there's a family center. And we'll be discussing a lot of climate action with uh, an elder uh, workshop. I can post that on the chat. Um, so I'm just, just generally just jumping in there and I don't have any specific, because we're, we're, there's a lot of good work being done. Of course, the West Side Seniors Hub is another wonderful organization. Yes, and so, the South Vancouver Seniors Network yeah. is also excellent, yes. So, Dr. Christopher, right off the bat, I think we'd like to be part of that October 1st, definitely. Uh, I think the OPIAC was looking at having... Um, what is OPIAC? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not connecting to the acronym. It, it used to be a Seniors Advisory Group. Uh, oh, that's, so oh right. that's right. That's the name. Okay. They just changed. They just older changed persons, it. that's right. So, which is a great uh, acronym, uh, yeah, the older people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mouthful, yeah, right. But yes. just don't call it OP OPEC, <laughs> right, please. Yes, I do remember now. Old, it's, yeah. It was changed to older persons, yes. That, that, that's right. Um, yeah. So there's Andrea, Sarah, there's like wonderful people. We're just trying to, we, we had a wonderful last year with a, with a huge workshop and um, trying to be specific. I think the previous uh, person asking the question was about local, initiatives uh so we're looking at it from a, what is the local initiative and also the global right so um in terms of policy in terms of katya of course you know katya with the city of vancouver yes katya yes. Yeah. yes so we're working with her um so we are creating a hub or definitely we need to uh you know um team up with you with you and the elders uh, I think that would so, be great, Varouge. Yeah. yeah. So why don't I send you, a, if you don't mind, I'll send you a, a summary of my comments. <laughs> oh, I'd be delighted. I'd be yeah. delighted. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah. One of the uh, people that I recently talked to is, oh, the new senior lead for the city of Vancouver. Yeah. What's his name? Anthony. 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 He's yes. amazing. He's a dynamite. He is amazing. 
<laughs> I agree. He's amazing. Yes. He's great. Yes. He, and it's, we're very, we, clo- we work very closely together. Yeah, that's great. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, please give him my regards. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll email him. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Are there more questions? Uh, I don't see any more in the chat. Uh, should we do a last call? I'm mindful that we're at two now. So um, last call if anybody has any questions. And then, um, of course, we will be sharing the recording uh, with the people who've attended the webinar. And then we also can share those two email addresses that um, Carol has shared. So if you want to get in connection with the BC Hub or Carol specifically um, to discuss any of your ideas, we can do that. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Even though I haven't been able to see you, I'm aware of your presence in the background and I appreciate your interest. Oh, that's a nice, nice little (laughs) for everybody. Oh, hearts. So thank you. I love hearts. (laughs) Well, thank you very much, Carol, for this. Thank you, Laura. It's a very pleasure to meet you. Thank you. And thank you everyone for joining us, of course. Uh, Really look forward to hopefully seeing some climate actions uh, leading up to that International Day of, and of course on that International Day of Older Persons. Yes, yes. If you have any any uh, inclination, get in touch with me or get in touch with uh, the BC Hub, and we'll do the best we can to support you. Great. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Carol, and thank you everyone for tuning in.